What are auto claims? Are they worth it? Or is it just a stepping stone to the holy grail of property? Can you make a decent living being just an auto appraiser? This is Adjuster TV. Don't try this at home. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. And by Paysetter Claims Service. Download the remote work guide at adjustertv.com slash paysetter. And by Adjuster TV Plus. Advanced scoping and estimating training videos for independent adjusters. Ride along with us at adjustertvplus.com. And before we jump into this video with Max, I have a really, really important recruiting opportunity for you. You hear all the time on social media that NFIP flood claims are great money and that it's a great way to go as a field adjuster because hey, you don't have to climb roofs, right? You probably also hear that when there's a major hurricane, there are often a lot of flood claims. Name storms like Katrina, Harvey, Irma, Ike, Sandy, I mean, the list goes on. Even unnamed storms can produce floods. You may have even heard that major destructive flooding can occur from as little as three days of continuous rain in the area. For example, storms parking themselves over the upper Midwest and just raining for days on end. If you're interested in learning more about flood and getting trained to handle flood claims, then you need to contact my friend Charles over at Colonial Claims for this unique recruiting opportunity. And you can reach him at charles booker at colonialclaimsadjuster.com or you can text or call 330-439-9047. And in case you didn't know, Colonial Claims is the largest flood claim processor in the business and they're aggressively expanding their roster this year. In fact, right now is your chance to get on board with the best in flood and make a boatload of money playing in the water. Again, that's charles.booker at colonialclaimsadjuster.com. And Booker is spelled B as in boy, U, C as in cat, H, E as in Edward, R. And don't forget to let them know that Adjuster TV sent you. And now back to Max. Hey everybody, my name is Max Olson. You may have seen me on this channel talking about the weather. That is my passion, but my day job is being an auto adjuster. I'm going into my fourth year of doing this full time. Before that, I worked at a body shop. That's how I got trained. We'll get to all that in a moment. But I really like doing auto claims. But of course, when you get into doing this whole claims adjusting thing, usually you're looking at being a property adjuster because that's where you hear all the crazy numbers, all the success stories. Those are coming from doing people's houses or commercial businesses, stuff like that. Um, you may have heard us talk about auto being a good stepping stone to get a taste for what it's like to complete claims, but then the ultimate goal, right, is to move on to being a property adjuster. But let's just press pause for a minute. We're gonna backtrack and talk about my story and how I got into doing auto claims in the first place. Now, I graduated high school in 2016 and I didn't have a sense of exactly where I wanted to go with my life. I knew I loved storm chasing. I wanted to do that as much as possible, but there just really isn't a very good career path in being a storm chaser. You can make sales, you can sell your footage to uh, news stations, stock footage, all sorts of stuff like that. But ultimately that is very, very very inconsistent and it's usually not sustainable. So I'm here searching for something that will pay my bills and allow me to storm chase more. That's really my only goal. And I started working just some basic uh, part-time jobs. I would work really hard in the winter and then take time off in the spring. Uh, basically just spend all my money storm chasing, recoup a little bit of it back from video sales and whatnot, and then just go straight back into a job. I did that for about a year. Um, and then I decided I need something a bit more sustainable. I wanna you know, be able to move out of my parents' house. I wanna be able to you know, have nice things. So I need to take a step back and figure something out. I happened to have lunch with one of my old neighbors and I was just kind of expressing some of this to her and she said, well, my dad is looking for people to come work at his shop. He needs a few drivers um, to transport cars back and forth. If you wanna go uh, in for an interview, I'm sure he'll hire you on the spot. And I said, oh, well, that might, that might not be bad. That's probably gonna be better pay than most anything else I'm gonna get. I'll have a little, little bit of leniency since I've known them my whole life. Um, and I called up Brian and he basically gave me the job right on the spot. He said, yep, absolutely, show up on Monday. We'll get you all set up. And I said, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna go work at this body shop. And uh, I started off just transporting cars. We had accounts with uh, Enterprise and Hertz rent a car out at uh, Denver International Airport. This was back when I lived in Colorado. And we picked up their damaged cars, drove them to the shop, 
fixed them, drove them back. And we had like three or four dedicated drivers. That's how big the shop was. Dedicated to just going to these different branches at the airport, um, also just some regular local branches. Picking up these slightly damaged cars, driving them, and then taking them back. So that's what I did uh, for the first month or so that I worked there. And then uh, Brian, my boss, came to me and said, hey Max, we're looking to add an estimator. Is that something you might be interested in? Now I'm thinking to myself, man, I know the bare minimum about cars. I don't think that I would be a good fit for this. I mean, it sounds great. I know these guys that are working up front doing the estimates are making good money but I just wasn't terribly confident that I'd be able to do it. He said, don't worry, we're gonna ease you into it, we're gonna slowly teach you, and you'll still be driving cars back and forth, but a few hours a day we'll spend dedicated to learning a little bit more about something, and we'll just slowly integrate you into the process. And I said, well, I can't turn that down. So I decided, yeah, I'm gonna become an estimator. Now, it took me a while to get really comfortable with the parts of a car, putting it on an estimate, and then submitting it. It, it was probably, I'd say a solid four to five months before I was writing estimates on my own with confidence. And even then, I still would have somebody come and do a peer review on uh, the heavier claims with more damage. So this is how I got my start in the whole auto industry. So I ended up working as an estimator at that shop for two years. I really enjoyed the work. I loved the people that I worked with, but the problem was I didn't have the flexibility that I wanted. While Brian, my boss, had known me my whole life, he knew how much storm chasing meant to me. He tried his best to be lenient, but there's only so much you can do. I was managing accounts. I ended up managing the fleet accounts with Enterprise and Hertz and a few other rental cars. Uh, CarMax, U-Haul. Uh, um, I was managing those accounts and you can only be gone for so long before stuff starts going awry. There's just stuff that I knew that they didn't, that didn't allow me to be gone for super long periods of time, especially on short notice. If they had ample notice, that was one thing. But with storm chasing, a lot of times you don't know if it's going to be worth it until like the day before or the morning of. So it just wasn't conducive. And I'm like, man, I really like what I do, but I just need more flexibility. So I did what anybody would do and I started going online and typing in keywords and trying to figure out something that made sense. And I stumbled upon Adjuster TV. This was 2018, the first year Matt was doing this and he was making videos talking about how you could become an independent adjuster, work for yourself, have flexible hours and make a great living running claims. And I'm like, man, this sounds way too good to be true. It not only sounds like a great way of living that'll allow me to storm chase more, but the catastrophic portion of it is interesting too because I am chasing weather that is causing these catastrophes. It kind of is like a full circle. So I'm like, where do I sign up? And then I did a little more digging and found Chris Stanley and figured out that you could do it for auto, not just property. And that meant I already had a huge heads up because I knew the software, I knew how to write estimates, I knew how to work with insurance companies. I just had to switch up my mindset a little bit. So I'm like, okay, I need to do this. This is like my calling. And I did more research. I found out, you know, it was legitimate because it really did sound too good to be true. Um, and then I started working on getting my license. Now, another thing that I wanted to do was relocate. I had lived in the Denver metro area my whole life. I wanted to move to Tornado Alley so that I could be smack in the heartland and be accessible to all sorts of different storm chasing. And it would put me in a good position for hailstorms that would cause catastrophes and therefore give me work. So I started working on getting my Oklahoma license. And after a while, I told uh, you know my job, hey, I really appreciate it, but this is what I'm going to end up doing. And they all were very happy for me. They're like, that sounds like an absolutely perfect thing for you. Good luck. Thanks for you know everything that you've done so far. So after I got my license, I pretty much just packed up my things and moved down to Oklahoma. It was a scary time. I had, you know, some money saved up, but I wasn't sure exactly, you know, how long that was really gonna last me. But thankfully things are pretty cheap in Oklahoma. I got a nice little apartment and I started making some phone calls. Now, I will say up until this point, I had already uh, made friends with Chris Stanley. I was doing stuff with them, helping out IAPATH, uh, showing the actuality of vehicle damage repairs. I was still, you know, working at the body shop for a few months when I had started this whole process. So I was able to take videos of cars being torn apart and then show them to the community at IAPATH 
and that got me some connections right off the bat and it helped me get into a place where once I got to Oklahoma, I knew some people and I was able to make some phone calls and send some emails and start getting work. When I got to Oklahoma, I started with one company. I didn't want to dive in too fast. I wanted to get a taste for what it was like doing auto claims by myself, but I also wanted to have a lot of flexibility to storm chase that spring. So I moved down in March of 2019 and I started with that one company doing just minor deployments where I would go somewhere that had received hail for like, usually like three to five days and just hammer out some claims and then come back. They had a few daily claims here in Oklahoma City, but I would say like maybe, Maybe three a week is what I was doing for them. So not much, I was not making a lot of money, but you know, there would be a hailstorm. I'd go somewhere for uh, a little while, make some money and then come back. Storm chase, do that whole thing. That was about a three month process where I was just doing that. I wasn't making a whole lot of money at all, but I was learning the process. I was getting down, uh, making the phone calls, scheduling appointments, making sure that everything, you know, checked off when you're doing your uploads and make sure everything makes sense. It was a good way to kind of integrate myself and get comfortable with the process. Want to work from home? I thought that might get your attention. I'll cut to the chase here and tell you that the IA firm Paysetter Claim Service frequently has work from home opportunities for the field and also for desk work, which let's be honest, really just means work at home in your PJs. Still wanna work in the field though? Paysetter's Evo platform is fully integrated with Hover. It is the best of the app-based claims handling systems out there right now. Technology is moving faster than ever and Paysetter is right there at the cutting edge. We put together a free guide to maximizing your productivity while working at home in your pajamas, along with a link to apply to this dynamic firm. And you can find both at adjustertv.com slash paysetter. So that once storm chase season was over, I was able to go full tilt and I started adding new firms. I started with one and then by the end of 2019, I think I was with four. Um, including some big ones like ACD and Nationwide Appraisals, which is now owned by Sedgwick, Sedgwick Appraisals. Um, but they were starting to give me a lot more work and I was getting to the point where, okay, I'm actually doing three claims a day instead of three claims a week. And I you know, slowly just learned how to manage that. And the industry as a whole has just actually just been getting busier ever since I started. So um, three claims a day went to five claims a day, went to now I'm usually averaging around seven to 10 claims a day. And it's great, I mean, it's, it's great money coming in. But one of the things that I found was that I was able to schedule things and still storm chase quite frequently, which was like, the whole dream, that's exactly why I started this career and it put me in a position where I was able to storm chase. Now I will say it is becoming a little bit harder now that I've become established, now that a lot of firms rely on me, it's becoming a bit harder to break away, but um, ultimately I'm still able to chase a lot more than I would any other job and I have dialed back even a little bit so that I do have a bit more flexibility. That's kind of the beauty of this career. You can make those choices. You can decide to turn the knob up and add a bunch more firms and get the claims coming in and just be completely busy, make a ton of money, and then you can slowly dial that back. You can get yourself to a more comfortable spot and um, it's, it's really kind of cool. Now, also, I will say that I am making money doing stuff with Adjuster TV and IA Path. Over at Adjuster TV, uh, I help out. We go to conferences and we do video shoots. I do obviously weather reports. And then over at IA Path, I help design and film the courses. And then I, I keep up with the community, help answer questions, stuff like that. So that is another source of income. But that's kind of that's kind of another cool thing about this is you're a business owner, so you want to have multiple streams of revenue coming in, whether that be um, diversifying what type of claims you do. So you don't just do auto, you do heavy equipment claims, you do um, marine boat type stuff. Maybe you do a bit of property and a bit of auto. Maybe you do like what I do, auto claims, heavy equipment claims, and then I help out at these other companies. There's just you know unlimited amounts of ways that you can bring in money and make your uh, business as profitable as it can be. So this kind of begs the question, is it worth it to just do do solely auto claims and right now I say absolutely um, most people I know are making good money 
the auto claims industry is at an all time high right now. And a lot of people are gonna be making historic incomes over the next year or so. I'm not sure if this is gonna be a peak and then it'll go back to kind of where it was a few years ago when I started, but um, right now it's really good. Now, one of the things I sort of glossed over was catastrophic claims and daily claims. When you're doing property, you kind of have to jump in on a catastrophe to kind of prove your worth before you can start getting daily claims because daily claims are usually more complex. They take more time. They require a higher degree of knowledge about you know, how to handle the claims process. So usually for property, you have to start with a catastrophic deployment, prove yourself, and then maybe you'll start getting daily claims. That is not the case with auto at all. You're usually gonna start by receiving daily claims and you're gonna slowly work your way into it. Um, I know a few people that have started on a catastrophe, but auto deployments usually don't last that long. If you're there more than a week or two, then that's pretty impressive. So most people are going to be doing daily claims around where they live. They'll set up a radius and do claims in that specific area. Then if you're slow and there happens to be a storm somewhere else, um, I've done this a few times where I'll just call up my firms and go, hey, send all my claims to the other guys here. I'm gonna go do claims in Texas for a week and you know make some money and then come back and hopefully it's a little bit busier. And just as long as you have a good set of communication and you're not leaving at a time where your um, home area is super busy, then you should be fine to just jump off and do those occasionally. You just have to have good communication with your firms. Every year I'll usually find myself doing um, usually about three to five little deployments. Sometimes it's just a long weekend, right? I'll go somewhere um, Friday, and come back Monday and I'll just hammer out a bunch of claims over the weekend or maybe there'll be a car lot somewhere. I've done this where I've gone um, to a different state where there's a car lot with like 300 cars and myself and somebody else will just knock that out in a few days. And then I've also done deployments where you do what's called a drive-in. This is set up by an insurance company, usually at a body shop or a dealership and they'll schedule a bunch of appointments and a line of cars will start to develop and you just go around and scope. This is usually for hail damage. You'll go around and scope the damage, um, write a quick summary, give it to somebody else to write or maybe you'll write it yourself really quickly uh, and then the next car comes and you do the same thing and it's just a crazy chaotic quick process but you're making like five, 600 bucks a day and usually what I would do is um, those last from like, usually 7 a.m. to like 5 p.m., something along those lines. And then at five, I would then go out and do uh, just regular claims. I would have a company sending me a few claims so that at the end of the day, I could go to different residences and knock out three, four more and just really you know, milk that deployment as much as I could. I'm out there to work. I might as well do as much as I possibly can. So now that we've talked a little bit about what it's like to kind of get started in auto claims, we've gone over my progression, you've seen some of the numbers from year to year, how I was able to build my business. Now let's talk a little bit about what it's like to complete an auto claim. So you're gonna be signed up with a few different companies and they all have their own online portals where they will send you a claim. The claim has all the information that you're going to need to be able to go forward. It's going to have the name and phone number and address of the person that the claim is for, whether it's insured or claimant. It's going to have the vehicle type. It's going to have a description of what the damages are, what the claim represents, and it's going to have a set of guidelines that you need to follow in order to complete this claim. So you're going to open that, you're gonna go scroll through um, everything and what I usually do is I'll take a look at all the claims that I've gotten in on a particular day and I'll kind of see where they're at and I'll start making a map in my head of okay, this one's here and then I got two that are up in the city up there and then I've got one that's way out in the country so maybe I'll do that at the end of the day and I start making kind of a map internally in my head on how I want the day to go. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen that way because you have to work with other people's schedules but I'm getting an idea of my head how I want my day to go and that's going to dictate how I make my phone calls. So I'm gonna go in and open the claim file. I'm gonna be looking for three things, their phone number so I can type it in, their name so I can make sure I'm talking to the right person, um, their type of car, and the company that this is for. 
Then I'm gonna give them a call and I'm going to say something along these lines. Hi there, my name is Max Olson. I'm an insurance appraiser reaching out on behalf of ABC Insurance. I'm calling in regards to the claim filed for the 2008 Toyota Tundra. Is Mr. So-and-so available? And they'll go, oh yeah, that's me, or oh, let me get you with them. And then I'll go, okay, perfect. I'm reaching out to schedule a time where I can come do an inspection on your vehicle and take a look at the damages so that we can get an estimate written for you. I have availability around this time. I'll generally try and put it in a, a time frame that I kind of want to do it so that I can make you know my route the way I want it to. But then I'll tell them, but if that doesn't work for you, we can certainly figure out another time. And if they say, yes, that time frame works, then perfect, I've got my first appointment set. And if they say, no, unfortunately, I'm not able to do that, I'll go, okay, well, I'm pretty flexible these upcoming days, let me know a time that would work well for you. And if they're going to do it on, say, I'm making this phone call on Monday, if they're gonna do it on Wednesday at two, then I'm going to know, okay, I'm going to be here Wednesday at two, so I'm going to try and dictate any other claims that come in and want to be inspected on Wednesday so that it makes logistical sense. And you, know, you can only do that so much, you're going to have to jump around sometimes where you know you would have loved to make it a nice logistical route that takes you from one to do another and another, another but you're gonna have to bounce back and forth and do stuff that's just the way it is but you try your best to make it as smooth and streamlined as possible so after I set up my inspection I'm old-fashioned I like to write my schedule down on a piece of paper um, the things I write down are the appointment time I write down the name and number of the person so that I can call them and let them know when I'm on my way and I can address them by their name. And then I'll also write down their address and the type of car that they have so that I can obviously put their address into my phone. And then as I'm scanning through the neighborhood or the apartment complex or whatever, I know what type of car I'm looking for. Um, and then once I get there, I'm doing my inspection. I'm going to get out of my car. If they're not already standing outside, I'll either go up to the door or give them a call, let them know that I'm there, and then I start the inspection process. Usually I'm going to introduce myself again and let them know what I'm going to be doing, which is taking photos and inspecting the damage so that we can write an estimate. I always make sure to let them know that I'm an independent appraiser, so I don't work um, as a staff employee for their insurance company. So that means some of my resources are limited. After I submit my estimate, there's only so much that I get in regards to updates. So that lets them know that um, they're, if they call me later on, that I might not have the most up-to-date information because after I submit my estimate, um, I, I really don't hear much. And I kind of double down on this towards the end. We'll get to that in a moment. But to do my inspection, I start by taking a series of photographs and I always take all of the same photographs. I do it in the same way every single time so that I don't miss anything. And I take total loss photos. Basically, there's just a regular loss set of photos. You're going to take four corner photos at each corner of the vehicle. You're gonna go get a picture of the VIN and the mileage. Um, you're gonna do pictures of the damage from multiple angles and you're going to get usually a measurement shot. And then there's total loss photos which are used to uh, show condition of the vehicle. So it's going to be taking a bunch of interior photos. It's going to be taking tread depth measurements of the tires to show how much tread is left. Um, I take total loss photos on every single assignment I do. Even if it's just a fender bender, I like to always have every photo that I could ever possibly need because it really doesn't take that much longer. Maybe 30 seconds to a minute longer to get those additional total loss photos. And then I know I'm good for whatever may come of that claim later on and I don't have to go back and take dumb photos. So I take all of my photos and usually as I'm taking them, I'm talking with the insured. They might be telling me their story about what happened or they might be starting to ask some questions um, and after I've gotten all of my um, main photos so the four corners the mileage the VIN the interior then I go focus on my damage I'm going to you know kind of look around before I start taking photos of the damage I'm gonna maybe crawl under if I need to and I'm starting to make my estimate in my head I know what things I'm going to be adding I know what things I'm going to be taking off the vehicle I know which panels I might be blending paint to and then I'm going to start taking my damage photos, do my measurement, do all that. And usually um, if the insured's talking to me, that's great. 
but um, I, I like to kind of try and focus in here. I wanna make sure that I'm getting all the right photos that I need. I wanna make sure I'm seeing all the damage that there is to see. Then once I'm done inspecting the damage, I'm going to talk to the insured about what I saw and I'm going to try to use basic terminology or if I use something like the term r &I, which stands for remove and install, I'm gonna explain that. I'm gonna tell them what that means, what that looks like, how it looks on the estimate, and I'm just going to try to give them a overview of what there is, what I can see. And I'm also going to tell them if there's something I can't see, say this is a severe front end or rear end hit, and I know there's likely damage behind one of those bumper covers, I'm going to go ahead and let them know, hey look, I know there's likely additional damage behind there. I just can't see it right now. So I won't be able to put it on my estimate, but I will still add it in my summary, notating that it's likely there. And once it's taken to a body shop, it'll likely be found. Next, I'm going to tell them about what happens now, because that's their main question. Okay, you've done your inspection, you've taken your photos, you've looked at it, what happens next? I'm gonna say, so now that I have everything that I need, I'm gonna go back and write an estimate for you. This estimate, along with my photos and my summary, is going to be submitted to the insurance company, and they're going to process it from there. Once I submit my estimate, it's pretty much out of my hands. So. They're gonna contact you within the next five to seven business days with a copy of my estimate and a check. Now, once it gets to the body shop, they're going to reassess it and they're gonna pull everything apart and they very well may find additional damage, which is absolutely fine. They will have a link that they can send additional photos and documents to, and then we can add that onto our estimate as a supplement. You do not have to worry about that. That'll be dealt directly between us and them. So that completely basically is going to eliminate any questions that they have about discrepancies, because they're they're gonna be worried that I'm gonna give them a check and then the body shop's gonna come back with a number that's way higher. And by explaining the supplement process, I'm now letting them know that if that happens, that's totally okay, that's normal, that's part of the process. We'll deal with it once we have the documentation from the body shop of those additional damages. Then I'm gonna reiterate that once again, I am an independent appraiser, so once I submit my estimate, I do not get updates. I'm not a staff appraiser, so I don't handle any of the processing I am just writing the estimate, taking the photos, doing the summary, and then I don't get involved and again until there's a supplement. So that is going to take a little bit of weight off me. I am, however, going to let them know that they are more than welcome to call or text me if they haven't heard back from the insurance company in a reasonable time frame, about five to seven business days. Um, because some companies are not great with getting back to them and people will go two weeks and not hear anything. And most of the time, I still have access to the file. I can go into the file and at least type a note and say, hey, can we get the adjuster to call this individual, give them an update? Um, or I can maybe try and get the phone number of the adjuster to provide to the insured. A lot of companies don't give you that information for whatever reason. I guess they don't want um, you contacting them without uh, the, the IA firm knowing. But um, a lot of times you'll, you'll not get the adjuster's information, um, direct information to give to the insured. It'll just kind of list their name and no contact number or, or a um, main hotline type thing. So um, if I can get the individual, the adjuster's direct number, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I guess I should mention if, if you are a bit confused, when you're doing um, appraisals for uh, vehicles, when you're doing auto claims, you are the appraiser. So you are not the adjuster usually. Uh, most of the time you are just going to write an appraisal, you're gonna do your estimate photos, and then you're going to send that to the adjuster of the actual insurance company. So just to clarify that, after explaining all of that to them, I'm gonna ask if they have any additional questions and then I'm going to go on to my next claim. I tend to write my claims in the car right after I inspect them. Uh, I usually have all what I call the admin information filled out. So um, that's gonna already have their name, the claim information, address, uh, vehicle identification number, that's all gonna be pre-input into there so that once I inspect the vehicle, I can just go into that estimate, I can write it, and then I can upload all the files. Now, I usually will get all the files uploaded into the claim portal and then I'll leave it. And then at the end of the day, when I get back to my office, that's when I'm then gonna go in, I'm gonna label all my photos, I'll write my summary, I'll do any additional things that the, they might be required in the guidelines, and then I'll submit them all at the end of the day.
So now that we've talked all about auto damage claims, what if you wanna get started in this industry? You can follow my footsteps, get a job at a body shop, hope that they're willing to teach you how to write estimates and uh, go about that way. You can maybe try and see if you can find a friend or somebody who knows somebody who does uh, vehicle damage repairs and learn from them, get tricks and tips. But the best way is going to be attending a training class. There are a few that are in person. Um, I can't think off the top of my head of the companies that provide them, but I know there are a few. Um, but the best resource is probably going to be IA Path. Now, I do work with IA Path. I am on the payroll, so this is not necessarily a paid message, but I do get paid monthly by IA Path. I want to make that completely clear, but they're an amazing company. I mean, I've been working with Chris Stanley since before I even started doing auto damage claims when I was still working at the body shop because I knew he was such a pivotal figure in the industry and I could just tell he was a good, genuine person. I would highly recommend the IA Path um, 90 day mentorship. You're gonna get a lot of pre recorded videos that show you all sorts of different types of damages, how to inspect it, how to scope it, how to write it, um, how to use all the different types of software, how to make phone calls, so on and so forth. And then once a week, there's a like three hour um, in person, well, it's, it's on like a Zoom type call uh, where you get to get all your questions answered. You get to do additional learning there. It's just a great program. You can do it from your house. You can do it while you're still working your day job right now. That's something that I would highly recommend doing if you want to ease your way into this career. Well, everybody, thank you so much for listening in on my spiel about auto claims. I really hope you take this into consideration if you're trying to get into the industry. There are so many different facets there are so many different options that you can choose on how you want to build your business. You can have auto claims be the majority of it like I do. You can have it just be something you do on the side. Maybe you're doing property during the storm season and then during the winter you're doing auto claims. There's just so many different ways you can go about this and I think auto claims are a great way to get into the industry and to make a good living. I'm, I'm proof of it. Many others are. I mean, you've heard the stories of James Mathis. He was able to make $100,000 in his first year as an auto damage appraiser. So really incredible stuff. Thank you guys so much for listening and feel free to ask any questions in the comments. I will be monitoring them and I will definitely answer them. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll catch you on the next one and be sure to take a look at some of the other videos about auto damage claims on this channel. This is Adjusted TV.